and welcome everyone to RedRaiders.com. I'm Zach Long, that is Chris the Pirtle, and we're going to take a look at the upcoming weekend in Texas Tech basketball. A lot of excitement around this weekend of Texas Tech basketball. Over on the men's side, they're going to play in front of an expected sellout crowd, first since 2007. And the women, they're going to travel to TCU and try to make a positive out of a recent string of hard luck, Krista. They are, and I think starting off on the men's side, Coach Smith came in and got his players to believe right when he got here. Now he's getting the fan base to believe, and I think that is a huge step in the right direction for the men's basketball program. On the women's side, this is their second time to play TCU, and so far the second time they've played better. They haven't lost by 30 the second time. So maybe the second time's a charm up there, but TCU is coming off beating Iowa State at Iowa State, so they're going to be pretty confident. Let's go ahead and get into detail with the Texas Tech men. Of course, they won last Saturday against TCU. They've had a whole week to kind of chill. Now they get Oklahoma State, a team that's been in the news a lot lately. They've had their struggles, and they've also got Marcus Smart, who has attracted a lot of attention for something in addition to what his skill set is. Flopping. Flopping. And, of course, he responded this week by saying, hey, everybody does it. But Marcus makes it a little bit more obvious when he does so. LeBron James has to be his favorite player if he's flopping. Man. It's just one of those situations where if you get close to the guy, he goes to the floor. But if Big 12 officials are going to still call it, he's a smart player for doing that because you can take another team's threat out of the way if you get him in foul trouble. Now, in terms of Texas Tech, Krista, they should be fresh. They've had a week to kind of chill, no, no Wednesday game. We should see an energized Red Raider club against Oklahoma State on Saturday night. They should be, and Coach said that they had Sunday and Monday off, so their legs should be fresh. And he said they worked a lot on the fundamentals, especially on the defensive end. He hasn't been real happy with that and also with turnovers. He wants the guys to clean up their game moving forward throughout the season. So they've really worked on that. And also after shooting one for 16 from downtown against TCU, he said our guys worked on shooting the ball. So hopefully with the week off, these guys have been able to put the pieces together to come out and play with some great energy, especially with this whole crowd. Now, Oklahoma State, on the other hand, I hate to use a cliche and say Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. I think that's an adequate descriptor of the Cowboys. Early in the year, looked like one of the best teams in the country, a potential Final Four team. Since then, they've lost four of their last five. They've kicked Stevie Clark off, one of their point guards, after his second arrest in less than a month. And Cobbins is also injured, so they have a short bench. Exactly. So right now, Oklahoma State has some concern, but still a dangerous basketball team when you have NBA lottery picks potentially in your top five. It's ridiculous. They have Marcus Smart, who I haven't been real impressed with as the seasons went on. When it started out, he was great. He showed that he has worked on his long ball. He has worked on the three-point shot. But now it seems like he's trying to do too much for this team who's loaded. So he really needs to calm down. They've got Phil Forte who's coming off the bench. How crazy would it be if on offense Forte just set up in, in the corner and Dusty guarded him and then Dusty did that on offensive side. So it was like a hockey game. And you know it could be a key could matchup that. tomorrow in that game because they're both lethal. Both teams know you hear them yell shooter when those two kids get the ball in their hands because if you give them an open look they will kill you. He did it the other night in a heck of an overtime game against Iowa State. Definitely, they're going to have to watch each other. If those two kids are left to roam, you're going to get into a shootout and all's out the door when you get into those situations and get away from the discipline things you want to do, especially what Tubby Smith wants to do. Absolutely, and while they are both good threats for both teams, Markel Brown for Oklahoma State has scored 21 and 25 points last year, led Oklahoma State against Tech, so he's going to be a factor as well. Basically, they've got to keep them out of transition, to slow them down, and really make sure they don't penetrate the lane when they get into their half-court sets. Texas Tech has to be there. Oklahoma State likes to run the flex offense a lot with a lot of ball screens, ball screens up at the elbow, and they really need to be able to communicate, something they haven't been doing defensively as of late. And I'll hit on last year before we move on to the Tech women. This is a unique environment. How unique is this? If they sell this place out tomorrow and actually fill it up with human beings, you and I have not been here during a time when that happened. 2007 against New Mexico, the last time Tech filled that arena for a men's game. This is a heck of an environment. You get two of the best dunkers in the Big 12 Conference. You got Markel Brown who just abuses the rim and Jay Crockett has thrown down some of the best. This is a good atmosphere if you're a Tech fan in Lubbock tomorrow night. Should be kind of a historic event, just something we haven't seen in a while. Absolutely, and it's going to be a great game. Like The energy is going to be there, and I think that sixth man is going to be key for Tech. I mean, they're, they're coming in fresh, but OSU is coming in angry. They lose in triple overtime to Iowa State. They lose to Baylor, who hasn't decided to play basketball recently, and then they lose to Oklahoma. They shouldn't be happy now, and Coach Smith said that his team needs to be angrier when it comes out to Saturday night. 
And of course, that is an 8.30 tip off, a little pressure on us deadline wise, but we'll take that trade off to see a cool atmosphere like that and a sold out United Spirit Arena. Krista now moving on to the Texas Tech women. They lose again this week and they lose bad in Austin. And I hate to be mean here and ask the question, you're around the team more than any of us. Are these demoralizing losses taking a toll mentally on Candy Whitaker's squad? I don't think it is because I think she, she knew that this was going to happen when she came. And I think she's seen success as not as, oh, we, we win and we lose. It's success as are you growing day to day to day. And she has seen that and these girls have seen that and they're showing that. But ultimately, you are looking at a win-loss column that isn't very pretty right now. She has done well on recruiting a lot of 6-2 girls that will help next year. But right now, she's just got to finish out the season and hopefully get a conference win before play ends. And now here's the deal. You hate to use a negative as a motivator in life, but right now Texas Tech is chasing some awfully ugly history. We were looking at this early today. Their worst on-court record in program history came back in 1980 and 81, 12 and 18. Least conference wins for a, for a Texas Tech team in conference play, four. That was under Krista Curry in 07 and 08. The math is starting to get scary here, Krista. You got seven regular season games left, left and only one in the Big 12 if you don't win. Pretty soon here, they could clinch the worst record in Big 12 hit, or in Texas Tech history. That's not something these kids want to be attached to. No, and I really don't think they focused on that right now. Like I said, they're taking it day to day to day. But while this isn't ugly, I'm going to find the optimism in this. Um, I've heard it from a lot of coaches, from the Kansas head coach, from Texas head coach. They know what situation that the coach is in now, but they say, look at the character that this team shows. That they're going to play and not give up for Coach Whitaker, even though they're down by 40 and 50 points. I think that character is something big, because if you're down by 50, you're going to be like, mm, heck with it, I'm done. But these girls are continuing to fight, and I think that's good character and could help next year. And that's a great example right there. You know, Coach Gale down at Texas had a pretty rough time of it last year. She's getting better with that squad. And Bonnie, her name has been on the hot seat a bunch of times at Kansas, and she rebounded by taking a team deep into the NCAA tournament. So those are two veteran coaches with a lot of wisdom to say to Candy Whitaker, hey, survive the storm right now. you got good times ahead of you. Absolutely, and like, like I said earlier with the staff on, re on recruiting, they have done well. She needs height, she needs muscle. She doesn't have that down low. You've got 6'5 in Haley Snyder and Kellen Snyder, and then you've got 6'3 in, in Nobles, and that's not, that hasn't been good enough down low for Tech. And so they're going to get 6'2 girls. They've got a 6'2 wing. They've got a 6-foot wing. That's really going to help that are sitting on the side now. That is Paige and Raven Brooks. So you will get to see them in uniform next year. But... It's the patience game right now for the Lady Raiders. And hopefully if you're a Texas Tech fan, you see a little bit more of like that Iowa State game a few weeks ago here in Lubbock. And they got a chance to win tomorrow up in Fort Worth against TCU. That game was hard to watch when they came down here to Lubbock. That's a game Texas Tech should have won. Let's just be blunt about it. Both teams played horrible in the opening stanza. Hopefully this is a game tomorrow where Tech comes out and can jump on TCU. Absolutely. I think that TCU went on like a 15-0 run to end the first half, and Tech came and fought back in the second half, but it was too little, too late, as it has been a lot of times when they're down by so much at halftime. And I think that TCU could be coming in a little bit overconfident, and Tech could pop them, but they're going to have to play defense, something that they have been struggling with, guarding the ball, especially girls can penetrate and go around them and then kick it to the open girl and then she'll hit a shot. So defensively it's key and Amber Battle needs help still. I mean, Absolutely. Minta and Ivonne did step up and help a little bit against, um, I think it was Iowa State, they both had Absolutely, 16. Yeah. But since then, Amber can't be five girls at once. No, she cannot. So hopefully tomorrow the Lady Raiders kind of figure it out a little bit and maybe get a big conference win, huge confidence thing for them. And, of course, that one tips off tomorrow afternoon in Fort Worth. We'll have full coverage of both. Chris and I will be out at United Spirit Arena for Oklahoma State and Texas Tech. And, hey, speaking of online content and things that are cool, we're going to have a neat thing today. Chris is going to debut a couple of slideshows over at RedRaiders.com and LubbockOnline.com. You're going to take a look at the top ten players on each side, men's and women's, who have had the biggest impact in Big 12 Conference play. I bet that was a fun list to put together. It's harder than it sounds. On the girls team though, on the girls side, it wasn't that bad because really there's one player on each team that's really stepped up and right. it made a difference. On the guys team, Whew. I'm still working on it. I cut all their names out in little pieces of paper because I was scribbling out so many names on my notepad. So that one's going to be interesting. This guy's 
league on the Big 12 side is so deep, and it's going to be really interesting to see how it finishes out. And the struggle we were having with doing this, the word parity. There is so much parity on the men's side. It's arguably, statistically, it's the best conference in the country right now. Should be a heck of a lot of fun to watch down the stretch. That, of course, will be over at LubbockOnline.com and RedBaiters.com. And, of course, Krista will have full coverage of those two basketball games tomorrow at those two sites. For now, though, we're going to bid you farewell and get ready for the big one tomorrow night between Texas Tech and Oklahoma State at United Spirit Arena, 8.30 tip-off. I'm Zach Long, that is Chris the Pertle, and you're on RedRaiders.com.